Greetings, comrades, and welcome to the eastern border. I have now returned from um, from Austria, where I was in for three days. I took part in a documentary. It wasn't a war documentary by no means, it was more of a philosophical one. I'm sure you'll like it, I've signed a bunch of NDAs, so I can't really reveal what's been going on there. But when it's, when it's going to come out, rest assured that um, I took some of my dark comedy with me to kind of brighten the day of um, all those people over there who are hardcore academics. Especially beloved, uh, like I know that especially beloved this episode, this whole uh, documentary will be by people of Prague. Yes, because, well, <laughs> you'll understand, I'm really proud of the one joke that I made. <clears throat> However, well, I had left my microphone in Riga, therefore there were no episodes uh, when I was in Austria. But I had a script, and everything was going according to plan, and I was supposed to land, do a little bit of writing here, and some works, and get back to it, and just record. Well now, life um, life tends to throw out in my scripts constantly. I mean, I woke up this morning, and guess what? There's only one thing to talk about. It's the Crimean Bridge that got blown up uh, yesterday night. It was, we found out about it very early, very early this morning. So, what's up with that? I've um, been watching all the news and everything, but the Crimean Bridge, that's a symbol. See, that bridge became a symbol of Putin's annexation of Crimea, of something that was, you know, gonna go down in history books as this is what Putin did. It symbolized the reunification, as they call it, of Crimea with Russia. Putin himself oversaw the construction of this bridge, and it was built by, among, by one of his closest oligarch friends, you know, the, the Rotenbergs, that group. Apparently, the total cost of this bridge was about 228 billion rubles. That's about 3.6 billion United States dollars. The amount spent on security of this bridge alone was 12 billion rubles, which is about 192 million dollars. They had a massive complex there because in the early days of the war, when when the whole discussion started be, started talking about how how this bridge is going to be blown up with rockets or HIMARS or whatever, yeah, I was very skeptical about that because they had a massive anti-air defense system. Like best anti-air defense system was, was placed there. They had like massive massive checks. The security was immense. There's a huge infographic out there that explains how it went through in so many levels. Well, what can I say? Apparently, that um, that all went to Dutchess and and kickbacks and all this all this nice stuff. Putin himself drove drove open this bridge. He drove led the first car across it, although it was deemed quite unstable and weird. But um, but yeah, Russian propaganda prided itself on the fact that missiles can't hurt it. It's very um, substantial. It's it's an engineerical marvel. It's like because it's built on sort of a fault line. It had to be built with special technologies. Nothing's gonna hurt it. All that yada yada yada. Meanwhile, while strikes in Crimea were happening, all the explosions and everything, Dmitry Medvedev, uh, the Dimon, the uh, the ex minister, ex prime minister. Also, he uh, served as a proxy Putin for a bit, but no one cares about that. Well, he stated that. In case anything happens with Crimea, then the response of Russia should be utmost serious one. Like, th that's where the whole tactical nuke thing even started. You know, he was right about one thing. Because this bridge was, was not, not blown up by any missile. Oh no. It was a truck that drove onto the bridge. And, you know, there's a, th th there was a car lane, and then there was a tr like a trail, railway line, line rail, and a truck from the Russian side, mainland Russia side, drove onto the bridge, found where, uh, like, wh where the whole cisterns with fuel and everything were, and then blew himself up. The truck was loaded with explosives, and apparently there are videos already on Russian telegram channels of the blog post of the check of the said truck. Apparently, the check was extremely superficial. They didn't even step in the truck, as I can see in the video. It stopped. It wasn't driven on the x-ray machine or anything. They just spoke with the driver, opened the back of the truck, peeked in, closed it, never went in anywhere, 
I let it go. Apparently, the guys who did the checking report that the driver was extremely calm during the whole conversation. Also, we have first reports on, on who the driver was. Apparently, it was one Boris Yusubov. He was from various reports say he was from the Nizhny Novgorod district or something. Apparently, he owned the car, but he had sold it recently, according to his family, to someone else, but um, the new owner didn't, didn't form it to himself, and he just basically drove onto this and exploded. He looked very default and whatever. He was fully loaded and everything. So yeah, Boris Yusubov, according to very first earliest reports that I'm getting, because it's a very new thing, I haven't even finished all the script work here. Well, <sighs> Boris Yusubov drove on from the Russian side and uh, exploded. And now Crimean Bridge was on fire. There's a massive panic in Crimea. We have seen videos of people storming the stores and everything. And this will this will hurt the communication massively. Now, of course, that is the response by both the official propaganda and, well, our buddies. Girkin and friends, the second name of the show. Unsurprisingly, though, the surprise, the, the kind of thing by authorities is that um, they don't care. They claim they don't care. Because, again, this bridge is an extreme symbol of Putin's power. A lot of people in the Russian Russian media sphere now state that if there is not a harsh response, then this is yet another show of weakness by Putin. And if you remember that I said in the last episode, which is the open letter to Mr. Musk, weakness is bad. Weakness causes you to lose legitimacy. Basic methodics of, of Russian propaganda like Solovyov and Margaret Simonyan is, well, it's been damaged, but it's no big deal. There are basically recommendations already out, which I just read, about the whole showing of explosions on the Crimean Bridge, which the administration of the president has given out the Russian media in, in, that, in the same, same vein as the governmental agencies, basically. So this is what the Russian propagandists are going to say just before they start posting everything, because probably everyone's still sleeping in the United States. And they'll pop up, listen to this episode. If someone posts stuff like this, you know that they, where, they've been, where, where they have received their instructions. Number one. Focus on the fact that the bridge is not destroyed, but uh, basically it's, it's be, basically that only kind of uh, parts of the automobile and railway uh, railway sections are are damaged. Remind them that um, preparations for restoration of the bridge has started already. Uh, some some of the Russian propaganda sites like Lentaru and others already claim that there are reports that the bridge will start working today evening and all that good stuff. No, it won't. The damage is substantial. Also, uh, Kremlin claims, gives instructions to all his propagandists, that uh, the Ministry of Transport has already started working on new logistical chains. And that Kerch, uh, Kerch Ferry is starting to work right now. Now, obviously, this is nonsense and this is massive damage control, but at this point, they can't deny that it's been damaged a lot. But started to plan, started to work. Yeah, you know, they planned out this whole bridge in total, you know. They put a lot of work and effort into it. And, oh boy, that's a lot of dodges and, and corruption. And, yeah, checkpoints on this object? I'm pretty sure that my military, military listeners are now thinking of bribes or something, but nope. Seriously, no. There were no bribes. These guys who were che who checked the, the truck before going on, on there, yeah, apparently they're just as stunned as everyone else, and they were triple checked. They received no bribes. This was just an honest to God, utter incompetence, and uh, not caring about the bridge. Because this guy also, apparently, I haven't found any ties to Ukraine with him even. I mean, obviously, this was a very planned operation. You, don't, you can't simply get a truck, blow, truck blown up there. But, uh, you know... The fact that it's the suicide attack, oh, that's a bit scary. Secondly, well, we don't know what's going on. I've heard rumors, especially um, recently about, say, the same Dugin as assassination, that Russian special services, who got into trouble after they tried to get some Wagner Group guys uh, moved to Ukraine via Belarus by tricking them that they're sort of going to Turkey and from there they're going to some missions and that failed and that leaked and I think we made an episode about that in 2021 or something, whenever that happened. 
yeah, that they've been trying to prove that their their usefulness to Zelensky, and that they're going out and planning that is diversions out on their own, without even giving much much consultation with Zelensky or or American colleagues. So this could be one of the things I I could pro I could see this being tied into that. Now, personally, I still believe that uh, Dugin's assassination was FSB getting something really wrong. But, you know, with this bridge explosion, might as well be a bit different. At any rate, how do you find a person that will blow himself off from the Russian side and won't cause suspicion and will be utterly calm? That's a surprising event. But now that I've told you the official response, because like I said, Margaret Simonyan basically just posted one word, and, and the question mark. Yeah, that was a bit weird. But then we have Igor Girkin and Wagner Telegram Group channels. And here are some of the more interesting comments that they've posted. Let's uh, let's start with our best buddy, Igor Girkin. As he likes to call him Strelkov, I never use that word, but, you know, same guy. Quote, Best congratulation to Vladimir Vladimirovich on, uh, in, the, in his kind of anniversary, 70th anniversary. Well, yeah, the best gift was given by the Honorable Kiev Partners. The celebratory fireworks destroyed a whole section, and already they're writing that possibly two, of uh, the automobile part of the bridge, and damaged the railway bridge. At the end of August, on the question, what should we await in the closest time? I, in Crimea, under witnesses, responded. You have about a month, month and a half, to take away your families and then leave yourselves. After that... The, the, the Ukers, as he calls them, will blow up the Crimea Bridge. Well, I didn't expect this, but managed to hit with accuracy to a week. He's uh, obviously not a happy camper right now. Then uh, there's, a, there's a telegram channel called Zapiski Visirana, or Notes of a Veteran, from a guy who's actually there, and he's one of the more radical pro-war guys, who's also anti-Putin. He writes, quote, if under today's act of terrorism on the Crimean bridge, which clearly was organized by Ukro-terrorists, the president of Russia personally won't answer and, 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 and do some measures and, and some responses to this, then this will be a sign of the weakness of the president, just like I, I told you earlier. Krimsky bridge the, uh, is a symbol of the era of Putin. Attack on the Crimean bridge... It is an attack on the Putin itself. In response to this act of terrorism, in Ukraine, no bridge should be left standing. You know, this is, uh, this is another symbol that really matters. Another method, message that goes through these channels, that's a bit, bit longer one, basically states that, uh, yeah, these Telegram channels also have received and saw these instructions that I just mentioned, and Cost News posts, the dumbest thing that you could do right now is to start calming down the country, stating that nothing scary has happened. Oh yes, it did happen. Yes, of course, the bridge hasn't been crushed completely, and you could repair it. And of course, there, there might even be some of those logistical chains somewhere else. But who's going to guarantee their security? Even if they exist, what if they're going to get blown up? And the guys doing the, the repair work? What if a missile or a drone strikes them? This, uh, the, he basically mentions that the whole, you know, propaganda instructions and the methodics of everything, that basically, you know, shows that, yeah, no one is actually really safe anymore. But apparently, well, I can't really state that it definitely was Zelensky who gave off on this order, but um, whoever did, in this case, actually managed to succeed. And also... Another channel, Starsh Eddi, which is, well, a Spetsnaz guy, an ex-Spetsnaz guy. He used this one to basically state that um, somehow in the discussion with uh, the occasional, the occasional Spetsnazovets, I was instinctively explained that right now Spetsnaz does not need to do any acts of sabotage in the rears of the enemy, because there are rockets. Well, now, apparently, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. And maybe we should 
ask those guys what they've been up to as well. Now, obviously, as, as this wasn't a rocket attack, and no, it wasn't a direct missile attack, as this was just a guy with, um, with a truck who drove onto the bridge and then exploded, Shoigu will wash his hands in cleanliness. This, one's go this one goes back to the Secret Services. And yeah, talking about that, um, I have some interesting interviews planned. I'll just have a bit of rest because I was working yesterday, so that's coming. But, but yeah, back to the topic. Spetsnaz guys. Security guys. I really wish to see more reaction of what exactly happened and how they're going to react. Because, oh boy, heads will roll. This bridge is too much of a symbol. And in the birthday of the president, of Putin, for this old mafia guy... And again, listen to my previous episode, you'll understand why weakness is so terrible to him. Yeah, this is kind of like a spit in the face. He now has to react. If he doesn't, then uh, interesting things might start happening. And that's it for today. Since, well, it just happened and this is everything that I know of. We'll be back soon enough. I wish to go back to a bit more calmer episodes. At the same time, if you like the show that we're doing here... Uh, please consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the eastern border. We charge per episode, and uh, we charge for four to five episodes per month. So, so you know, please set up your monthly limits there, but, you know, every every Patreon that we have actually really helps us. If you're more a one-time guy, then you can go to the eastern border LV, our homepage, where you can listen to the episode without ads, and click the donate button there. It, it, uh, it, uh, we have PayPal, but, you know, you can donate with a card there. That also helps all of our expenses, and especially now, since I'm dealing with a tax man, trying to explain to them what, what Patreon is. Or, you know, if you want to help the show in some other form, I always respond to messages on Twitter, because, yeah, email is weird, Patreon messages are weird, I have a lot of things that I need to send people and do right now. But, um, if you want to for sure contact me, then Twitter is my most used platform. You can not even sit there, I have grown my audience, which is nice, I'm, we're, we're pretty big. Aiming for the blue check mark, but but yeah. Please, please, we'd be we would be very much appreciative of your support, and we'll of course carry on giving you the best news that we can. До свидания, товарищи, and remember, happiness is mandatory.